going to take it back and make it a wee bit more primitive, okay, we're going to use the old flint and steel. Okay, this is what primitive man for, for a long, long time would have used to start fires. Alright, they didn't have the science behind the ferrocerium rod, they used this. And a uh, piece of flint, piece of steel, exact same principle, the flint is harder than the steel. Okay, so I'm going to shave off tiny pieces of steel, that small, whenever they separate from the mass, the oxygen in the air ignites them. Alright? Okay, now, the very important thing to remember here is that you need to have whatever it is you want to set on fire ready to go. Ready to go. You have to have it primed and ready to go. And we have a, a piece of material here called char cloth. Okay, which is basically charcoal but cloth. Okay, charcoal is made from wood and this is made from one of my wife's tea towels. And if he tells me, I'll hit him with a sword. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're simply taking this piece of char cloth and we're going to hold it really close to what we're doing and hoping, hoping with all hopes of hope that a spark lands on it and that's going to be enough to ignite it. 3,000 degrees, about 1,000 degrees. And I know that sounds, 1,000 degrees is still very warm. If a 1,000 degrees spark lands on you, it's not going to burn you. It'll actually go out very quickly. Yeah, I wouldn't blame that about this charcoal. Not me at all. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves there. Have a bit of bond in time. Okay. Now, if, tell me to turn the lights off quickly. Okay, what you can see there is a little glow. Okay? What we do with this is this. Lights back on. Ow, ow! <laughs> that's a beard. <laughs> and that's charged off. Now that will smolder away until I get it to whatever it is I want to set fire to. Now, slightly more difficult than the Ferrocerium rod. So over here, tell you what, just hold your hand over that. Just hold your hand through the heat. Oh, no, it's on fire. <laughs> <clears throat> Feel the heat emanating off that. That's just a little piece of cloth. Yeah. And all I've done with that cloth is I've, uh, everybody will get a chance to do this later. What I've done is you prep it early, you get a tin, um, any tin at all that stains, put a small hole on top of it, bung as much cloth as you can into it, and set it in your barbecue when you're having steak. And, uh, or any fire you have in the house, coal fire, and there's not enough oxygen to let the, the, the fabric burn, okay, but it chars, and then it's ready to ignite. So that'll, you can see, just burn away there. And that's what we use. Who wants to have a go at that? Primitive fire start. <laughs> any particular steel you'd like to use, feel free, they all work as well. Go for the big one. There's a bit of flint. Now, let's see if we can get a few sparks first. We'll get a few sparks going. There we go. We bet you can get aggressive with it. Don't worry. Okay. What you're looking for each time, see when you break a piece, you're actually looking because you're shaving bits of steel off. If you're hitting a rounded piece, or a dull piece, you'll not shave. So if you give it a wee feel with your hand, okay. and try and feel for a sharp piece, um, coming down on that should probably work. Okay, now this time, simply on your thumb here, hold that, just back a wee bit so that it doesn't um, break up on you, but so you try and get a spark onto it. Okay. Nope. No, try again. Like why can't we get in there? No feature. No sir. If that was a feature, you know. Smoke in. You're getting spotted. There you go. See that wee tiny one? That's yeah. all you need. There you go. Now take the charge cloth. Okay. Roll it off. Just keep it nice and tight. So it's all all together. 
And watch your fingers and blow. Give it a good blow. Big blow. Big blow. Don't do it. Don't be, you're not going to put it out. You see it starting to spread? Yep. Okay. Now if we take that. Don't burn your fingers on my account here. I'll take that time, okay? And we make a tinder bundle. We simply apply the two of them together and then blow. <laughs> yeah, fire burns up, so. That's how you make fire. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's combustion. Okay, you've got modern combustion, you've got primitive combustion. They're simply the same thing, just made slightly easier. But the important aspect of that for our lives is this combustion sometimes takes friction. Okay, sometimes for us to catch fire, there's going to be uncomfortableness. Pressure had to be applied. There had to be force. Okay, we had to put a bit of force behind that. It didn't come right. You were probably surprised how hard you were whacking at that. Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh, just wee wee taps. You have to get in there. You have to make things work. And if we want God's Holy Spirit to set us on fire, to ignite us, to allow us to combust, sometimes it's going to be a wee bit uncomfortable. There's going to be a wee bit of force implied. Um, so we can see how a simple tinder bundles made, we can see how to ignite char cloth. A way to produce fire is important, okay, we need it in, in cold situations, we need it if we're going to purify water, we need it if we're going to cook food. And what does fire bring us? It brings us light in the darkness. Um, if you've ever been out, outdoors, I, I've stayed outdoors some, with no shelter other than what I've made, okay, and when you're lying on your own, and a man-made shelter in the middle of the woods, your imagination has a lot of fun with you, okay? It really can play some marvellous tricks, and you sometimes drift off into realities that aren't so real. And what does fire do? It brings light. You have a nice fire going. You don't see the dark anymore. Your gaze is on the light. Your gaze is on the fire. When people are out camping, they, they, they call it the, the, the woodland TV. You can get a group of men out at night around a fire and they're sitting saying nothing to each other, just all gazing into the light. And sometimes in our walk, that's all we need to do. We need to become um, ignited in the Holy Spirit and just spend our time gazing into the light. Because if you look past the light into the darkness, it's easy to become distracted. It's easy to become discouraged. It's easy to allow ourselves to, to be put off. But if we lose ourselves in the light, if we lose ourselves in the fire, things become better. Things become warmer. It brings us heat. And, and what does heat do? <coughs> heat purges and heat purifies. And we're going to look at container, we're going to look at uh, things like food and water in a minute or two. But um, heat, heat can do, can cause reactions that we couldn't get unless we had that fire. You know, if you manage to skin a rabbit, if you caught a rabbit, um, which is really hard to do when you're out in a survival situation. Uh, I've gone by eating nettles, okay, which is horrible. But you just pick them and you roll them and you eat them and you pick them and you roll them and you eat them and it, at least you feel like you're getting something in. But you see once you get heat and you get a bit of water and you throw a few nettles in and you get what's almost like a brew going and you're drinking a warm drink, things change. The heat causes a reaction. Fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives will cause a reaction. Whenever we allow God's Holy Spirit to move in us and ignite in us, there will be a reaction that makes things change. What it also does is it scares away predators. We don't have to worry too much. Like whenever I'm out with my wee girl, my daughter's 12 and she loves going out camping with me. And we go out very minimal, like she'll sleep on the ground with me in, in just like a bivy bag or in a hammock. Um, her, she doesn't worry about anything out there because she knows there's nothing scarier in the woods than her dad. <laughs> but she also has a good fire going. And a fire will keep away predators. And if we have God's Holy Spirit burning within us, burning within us because we've taken the time to use the cotton tool to produce friction and fire, and we allow God to burn within us, we don't have to worry about the roaring lion, about the predator that's out there. Because we're protected. We're protected. In the Old Testament, fire was symbolic of God's presence and acceptance. 
God uh, appeared to Moses in the burning bush. Fire fell uh, on the, the sacrifice that Elijah had on the mountain. A pillar of fire was present with the, the Israelites in the wilderness. And the New Testament is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. But Thessalonians warns us what? To, not to quench the fire. And we can see how hard it was to get a fire going. We've seen the discomfort that's caused in getting a fire going. And sometimes it's so easy to quench that fire that we've worked hard for in our lives. Sometimes we, we spend a lot of time searching and, and, and chasing God. And, and we try to work things up and we nearly overwork it. We nearly cause everything to fall in around us. And God's saying, just breathe. Just let it happen. Just, just accept what I have for you. And don't try and work it up. Don't try and make it happen. What we're going to look at next is cordage. Before we just go there, we're going to look combustion. Combustion requires energy. Okay? I need to take this to this. Energy. I need to take this to this. And sometimes we need to take the Word of God and apply it to our lives if we want to see it.